Hi there. In this quick video, we will be taking a look at this PICTEC PH meter. The model is PICTEC 5307. And thank you for sending this in for a quick review. So I wanted something like this, basically for two big and strong reasons. Mine, yours could be completely different. I wanted uh, once to test uh, mineral water that my parents drink a lot compared to standard uh, tap or flat water. I had the impression that it's a bit acidic, but we will see now if my impression was right or wasn't because it kind of hurt my tummy a little bit when I drank that thing, so who knows. And the other recent uh, reason, I want to see if uh, soil can be tested with this uh, and my wife one moment yeah my wife was on the intercom uh, back so I want to see why some plants didn't really like to grow in the garden is the pH actually wrong on the soil because it's not enough just to throw in um, uh, fertilizer without checking some stuff so you just put more and more manure, for example, and hope for the best. Uh, it kind of doesn't work like that. It could be too much at a certain point in time. So pH does need to be tested from time to time. And up until now, uh, for my flowers, for example, I had this uh, little guy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it works. It works, but it's not exact at all. It just gives you a hint. We will be testing it. <laughs> with the PICTEC. So, safe to say the PICTEC is much more uh, accurate and uh, much more complete. So, the packaging, that's about all she wrote. We can put that aside and we will be doing a few just simple and quick tests in this video, nothing fancy. I mostly want to show you around the tool, not how to use it, because myself will need to properly learn how to use it. It's not like I I, re I really know, but for simple stuff, I think it's simple. So, nice little box in here. Certificate uh, of quality. And manual, and I think in here we should be putting in uh, the batteries. In uh, the standard way, I'm not reading the manual, I'm guessing first and we'll see later. So, yep, here we can put in the batteries, has a foam in here which is touching uh, the plastic to make sure the batteries cannot pop out by themselves. And what type of batteries? LR44 batteries, three of them are required to run this. So, that's quite simple. Uh, what I'm not 100% sure yet is why we have a small flathead screwdriver in the package. Maybe it will make sense at a point. So, I'm guessing that uh, what's actually checking the pH is the glass tube in there. The black one might be the temperature sensor and these two... Hmm, let's see the manual. <laughs> so, be back in a second. Mm -hmm. This might be used to measure the conductivity of a certain liquid. If you look inside your uh, washer fluid in your car, for example, uh, you will see two electrodes. And the car knows based on if the electrodes are submerged or not, if you still have liquid, when they are not uh, submerged anymore, they don't conduct and hey, you get a notification. I think also in your uh, coolant, you have two electrodes. So I think these are used for uh, conductivity measurement. Uh, the tiny white one, couldn't tell you honestly. Hmm. That one, I'm not sure about. The manual doesn't give you <laughs> exactly which of these sensors do what. Anyway. So, there's that. Uh, at this point in time, let's put in the batteries. We have the plus right in there on a the side. Camera focus, please. 
So it means that all the positives will be going to that side. And for this type of batteries, the big, big metal part is positive and the tiny on the front, which we will see later is negative. I spy with my little eye. Let's make some more light in here. You see that screw, right? Camera, can you please hold, help us focus? Ah, let's see this light that I intentionally made adjustable. Hey, it works. It works. You can see that screw right there. EC TDS to change between them or to adjust something. Not really sure yet, but for that we have the little screwdriver. Batteries again, back to the positive. Do not short them, that would be really bad. Push them a little bit. And yank. Uh, think this little guy is kind of a bit annoyed by me at this point. And I might be having a bit of trouble with it. Let me think of something to keep it apart from the batteries. Yep, that was it. And we're in. And now if we put this thing in here, it's holding the batteries in place. It's also sealed as you can see from the orange seal just to take one more look yep, in place nothing moving anymore let's see and for as long as it as it's on turn off this light not need it anymore we have a backlight remove this so hopefully uh, it will be a bit more clear on camera And it's good. So now at this point uh, temperature 23.7 yes considering that uh, it's in my hand uh, yeah makes sense because in this room they are about 23 and you can see it climbing so yep that's about where it needs to be and now let's start with some tests be back when they are ready so from factory it powers in easy mode or zone so from mode you change it to ph and start playing around this is flat water and it's a bit basic pH 7 is uh, right smack in the middle between base and acid. It will settle at a point. Yes, normally you need to clean the tip with uh, uh, with distilled water and then dry it up. But for what we are doing here, I think this is enough. So this water is, is pretty close to being right smack in the middle which is good yeah for uh, for our purposes oh i hope i don't uh, wiggle that down and it is actually growing so tap water is not exactly as neutral as the one that uh, I am drinking but it's more on the base side not sure how you pronounce that in English sorry hopefully I get it uh, right and I don't need to uh, even change the word uh, under the video somewhere anyway stable now uh, and yeah when you do this measurement it changes also based on the temperature of the water so these have been in this room for at least two hours so they are all at the same temperature otherwise this uh, test would not be correct 
probe needs to go in maximum up to this level, so don't put it more. And I was right. The mineral water is clearly more acidic. Ha. Yeah, I love it when I'm right. It's absolutely clear that it's more acidic. Let's go back to, to the one that I drink, which is closer, the closest one to, to being uh, neutral. And you can see it growing. So now I can tell my father for a fact that the water that he uh, drinks, and my mother also, they both drink it, is a bit acidic and uh, not ideal for uh, his uh, stomach acid, uh, extra acid or how it's called, uh, problems. This one, my tap water, could actually be better for him because uh, you can see it's, it's it's uh, kind of starting maybe to neutralize a bit of the acid uh, in his uh, stomach. Just a little bit. If I would measure vinegar or something like that, these differences would be way, way bigger. It actually powered off by itself. So it has, uh, what is it called? Timer. And the temperature is lower, I think, because it has water evaporating from it, so it's lower than the room temperature, which does actually make sense because water uses heat to evaporate. Anyway, let's poke it in here. Okay. So the reading is almost identical to the tap water. So basically the soil is quite okay. I might do this test with even less water, but the soil should have changed this. If it was really bad, either alkaline either or acid should have changed this reading by a significant amount in my opinion. This is not for testing soil. What I'm doing here, it's not its purpose. But at least it tells me that there's no huge problem as far as I, I can figure it out. Yes, it is making the tap water a bit uh, um, less, uh, how you call it, <sighs> less alkaline. So this is a bit more acidic actually the soil itself, but doesn't make the change by a whole lot. Hey, let's try and get to the conductivity part of things, because that is something that uh, I understand. So EC is actually conductivity and flat water, it's not that conductive. Many people don't understand that water without too many particles in it is not that conductive. If I would have uh, distilled water, it's barely conductive or almost not at all, basically. This also a bit conductive, but if we throw it in here, way more conductive because the particles make it conduct way more. In here, I'm not sure, but it will. Yeah, it's it's more conductive being mineral water. Can you see it? Hopefully, it's more conductive than flat water. And I'm not cleaning this between uh, measurements, so I'm just putting it from one into the other. Measurements are, are highly inaccurate at this point, but that's not the idea. You can play around with this a lot, but you need to clean it. You need to do the things proper. Anyway, at this point, let me test vinegar, which should be alkaline and the lemon, which should be highly acidic, and see what we get. I can also tell you that uh, this is used for calibration on that screw. I read it in the manual now. So, we have uh, lemon juice and vinegar in here. Let's go to pH mode in vinegar. I was expecting this to be way basic, but weirdly enough it's acidic. 
but lemon juice even more than this. But shouldn't vinegar be actually basic? I need to do a bit of internet readout now. Okay, my understanding was quite wrong and the readout is absolutely 100% correct. As you can see here, vinegar is a bit less acidic than uh, lemon juice. So if I want something uh, really basic, bleach or drain cleaner, maybe even soap as you can see here. But um, yeah, no thanks. <laughs> so uh, yeah, this kind of uh, gives you an idea of where you are. And again, some things like milk, for example, change the pH when uh, they are a bit uh, old. So you can make an idea of how old they are based on the pH test. For me, it's quite clear. Uh, I need to be reading a little bit more about these things. But overall, the soil that I tested is not as bad as I thought. And the mineral water is exactly as I thought. It's more on the acidic side. So not great if you have uh, stomach problems. Something cool that I just noticed, this little glass bead has a liquid in it and, oh come on, move around. You can see also a bubble in there that's moving around. So somehow uh, a reaction happens there. You can also see a tiny wire that makes it able to read uh, the pH level. So oh, we have a way of actually putting this in or no, I think it's universal. Yeah, it's universal. That's uh, about it. Thank you very much PicTech for sending this tool in. Yet another tool that gives me a reason to learn more stuff to even be able to properly use it. I did. Uh, quite quickly what uh, I was uh, hoping to do but now that I have it obviously I can do much more than this. So thank you very much for watching hope you liked the video in which case please give it a like check out my other videos and as always see you in the next one. Bye!